The last few years haven't proven to be dystopian enough, so how about a drama that shows us what life could be like if we pretty much wipe everything out? Vesper's coming to theaters and VOD very soon, but is it worth the price? After the collapse of the Earth's ecosystem, Vesper, a 13-year-old girl, uses her survival skills to subsist in the remnants of a strange and dangerous world with her ailing father. When Vesper finds a mysterious woman alone and disoriented after a drone crash, Vesper agrees to help her find her missing companion in exchange for safe passage to the Citadel. Meanwhile, others are searching for Camellia because she harbors a secret that could change all of their lives forever. Now, we're told in the opening crawl of the film that this takes place in a new era of Dark Ages. And because humanity had been trying so hard to prevent ecological collapse just through genetic manipulation, it ended up bringing about exactly what it was trying to prevent. So all plants, animals, and even most people were wiped out as a result of these created viruses and organisms. And of course, in pretty much any dystopian narrative, the world is separated into two extremes, the haves and the have-nots, with very little or no nuance in between. Now here the rich live in protected cities called citadels, and everybody outside of those is barely able to survive. But the citadels are benevolent, right? Well, they have found a way to create seeds that will produce food, but in order to maintain their status and their control, the seeds are engineered to only be good for one harvest. So naturally, there's a massive dependence on the poor for the citadel, and that's the world we find ourselves in with a teenage girl named Vesper who's very adept at biotech. Now, this is one of those films I think as a critic that I'm supposed to fawn over because of how artsy the display is within this desolate and post-apocalyptic framing. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. The settings are captured really well. The landscapes, they're cold. They're not totally barren, but very formidable and unwelcoming. And the environments have adapted to have new plant life. And I think the film showcases these in subtle but really awesome ways. Certain plants feel almost sentient, and when combined with some vibrant colors, they create a beautiful mini-oasis amidst dirt and despair. The costume designs are also excellently captured, where everything is very dirty. I mean, the dress is earth tones, and anything just really dark and drab. Now, these contrast really well with the clothing of Camellia, the one who crashes. She's the one from the Citadel, because she has this whitish clothing that just yells cleanliness and purity. And then the acting by Raffaella Chapman, who plays Vesper, I mean, she's quiet, but not mousy. And she plays the character as very smart, resourceful, and inquisitive. And she's also very tough. Despite her young age, Vesper has to care for her father, which basically means keeping them both alive. And that's not an easy task, given the circumstances. Now, I know it sounds like I actually am fawning all over this just because of the positives that I've listed. I mean, and they are deserved, but the film itself is a slow and trudging one. And I'm not talking slow burn where everything is building to this exciting climax. I mean, no, it's just slow moving. It's not quite boring, but it's hard to be completely invested in all aspects of the story. I mean, this is just short of two hours, and I felt the time at several points throughout. There's an antagonist in the story outside of the unseen Citadel elite, and this antagonist is played by Eddie Marson, who does a really good job of being quietly menacing and slimy. Now, his performance is fine, but the story doesn't provide him with an overwhelming reason to exist within the narrative. He has minor dealings with the Citadel, but when we see him, he's in the exact same boat as the rest of the have-nots. So great, I mean, he has communication with the elite. Where does that get him? I mean, and then how does it benefit him within the story? It really doesn't. He's puffed up and can almost be seen as a sort of gangster within the have-nots, but he has finagled himself to appear like he's a benevolent leader, even though he exploits all those around him. Now, there's a small mystery at play within the story, but as it's approached and then revealed, the payoff just doesn't feel significant, especially given the narrative actions that take place immediately after. Now, there's a certain plot point that I want to talk about that just drove me nuts, and it seemed fairly futile, but I also don't want to give any spoilers. I mean, we got some actions that surround characters who make some decisions that have an effect on other characters, but then the characters just do something that basically negates the plan. But those that were affected, they still have to deal with the consequences. So that was clear as mud, right? I mean, it was vague and confusing. I get that. It's just that this part in the final act of the story, it was really frustrating because of how it actually went nowhere. And now while I am talking about some character actions too, there's a scene that takes place between Camellia and Vesper. They're reading this book and good gravy, somebody did not know how to say cut on set. The scene goes on for far too long and is actually a bit annoying at how much time is devoted to it. I mean, if this were a comedy, you'd think they were trying to make the sequence just absurd, but that's not the case. It's just an insufferable scene. Now, despite not enjoying all of the story arc, something that I did appreciate and enjoy, in addition to those things that I had mentioned earlier, was the special effects. Now, these are used minimally, but I think they look great. 
at times we'll see drones flying through the sky. And then there's this floating beach ball type of thing that it follows Vesper and it really just allows her to communicate with her father. But the real wow factor for me came with a lot of the plants. I mean, we see some towards the end that are very impressive in how they're designed and then very surprising in how they behave. And the effects are used in such a way that they become very convincing and real. And I do think there's a certain level of predictability within the story, even if you may not be able to point out every single obvious moment. I mean, just the overall story feels very routine, despite having a wrapper that is a little unique. And I do like that amidst all the dreariness that's created from the look of the film, and then even with the pacing of the storytelling, I like that the film ends with a little bit of hope. I mean, it is vague, but it's still present, making us believe that the story might continue with some positivity, even though we won't be shown it. So overall, Vesper captures the dystopian setting with a dark and dreary viewpoint. While the haves are ill-defined and strangers, the have-nots are showcased in gloomy and melancholy ways with tangible struggles and obstacles. The set and costume designs are effective, and the acting by Raffaella Chapman in the title role is superb. Unfortunately, the story execution is dull, with an insignificant arc that's predictable and slow. While this may be impressive in certain aspects to watch, it's a chore to do so. There's no sex or nudity, some profanity, and a bunch of violence. I give Vesper two and a half out of five couches. So while this may be okay to rent on demand, I'd personally be very disappointed if I'd shelled out the cash to see it in the theater. So are there any dystopian films that you really enjoy? Fury Road and Book of Eli are extremely satisfying for me. And then I don't think I'm ever going to watch The Road. I'm just again, I mean, but you know, hey, let me know what you like in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.